Well, I mean, the exciting thing to do would be some sort of electric vertical takeoff and landing, supersonic jet. Aviation is responsible for 12% of CO2 emissions from all transport sources. It is natural for Tesla CEO. Elon Musk, whose company mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, to think in an electric airplane. He has acknowledged having this idea in mind for more than 13 years. Be mostly propeller. So this is clearly something you've been thinking about a lot. Oh, sure. Yeah, like for 13 years. Do you think it's going to be the next thing for you? <laughs> I don't. I hope not. I'm a, I hope not. Um, <laughs> so, there's, there's some smart people I have to try and tackle it and I, think, I hope they are successful. In this video, I will analyze the technology behind what I think is the electric vertical takeoff and landing jet that Elon Musk believes could disrupt the aviation industry. There are currently many companies working on electric VTOL aircraft. We can classify them into four categories. The first category of eVTOL is multi-copter architecture. This configuration is relatively simple and can be very efficient during vertical takeoff, landing, and hovering. However, without wings, multicopters lack cruise efficiency, which limits their application to urban air mobility markets uniquely. Companies in this category are Ehang and Volocopter among others. The second category of eVTOL is lift and cruise architecture. These merge the multicopter for vertical takeoff and landing with a standard aircraft for cruise flight. Doing so allows the aircraft to achieve both efficient vertical takeoff and landing and efficient cruise. In order to maximize range for these concepts, the propellers needed for VTOL are designed with fewer blades and shorter cords to reduce drag during cruise flight. The small size of the propellers for VTOL operation creates a significant challenge in terms of noise emissions because of increased blade tip speeds Companies in this category are WISC and Beta Technologies, among others. The third category of eVTOL is the tilt rotor architecture, which either involves the wing and propellers or the propellers alone to tilt. This allows the propeller axis to rotate through 90 degrees as the aircraft transitions from hover to forward flight. In general, this architecture allows a propeller to be designed which is more optimal than would be possible with a lift and cruise architecture of aircraft. However, this comes at the price of higher technical complexity and larger overall size and weight due to the tilt and variable pitch mechanisms. The hover requirements needs the propellers to be large with low tip speed and low disc loading. This means that either the motors need to be large and heavy to produce the low speed torque or a gearbox is required, eventually interfering with the structure. Companies in this category are Joby Aviation, Archer, and Vertical Aerospace among others. The three categories of eVTOL discussed all rely on a propulsion system based on propellers. These three categories represent most of the companies and startups working on eVTOL. It is important to add Opener's Black Fly as a special mention. In this case the body of the aircraft tilts, and the propellers are fixed to the wings. The fourth category of eVTOL is known as ducted fan architectures. A major advantage of ducted fans over unducted propellers is that the duct acts to significantly mitigate noise, both blade passing and broadband. This is achieved both by the presence of the duct and by acoustic liners mounted within them. This is of particular importance when the payload of aircraft is increased. When the payload is raised on a propeller aircraft, the only way of holding the level of noise constant is to hold the disc loading constant and to therefore increase the size of the propellers. When the payload is raised on a ducted fan, the designer has an extra degree of freedom. They can let the disc loading rise and use the duct and acoustic treatment to limit the increase in noise. For a fixed size of the footprint, this results in a ducted fan aircraft having a payload that is approximately 40% higher than a propeller aircraft. The Lilium Jet This aircraft features forward canards main wings, and a distributed propulsion system providing vectored thrust. The main wingspan is limited to less than 14 meters to enable the use of existing helipads, approximately 14,000 possible locations in the United States alone. Simple by design, there are no ailerons and there is no need for a vertical stabilizer. 
the landing gear is fixed and there is no hydraulics. Directional stability is provided by active electronic differential thrust control. The aircraft is controlled through a fly-by-wire avionics system. The main wings generate about 60% of the lift, the canards about 20%, and the remaining 20% is generated across the fuselage. The canards and wings are positioned as far apart as practicable to enable the aircraft to be stable in pitch. The propulsion system consists of 36 individually controllable flaps, which also serve as lifting and control surfaces and each flap contains a ducted electric fan. The 36 ducted fans are embedded in a one to two ratio on the canard to the main wing. Embedding the ducted fans into the wings eliminates the need for dedicated nacelles, reducing weight and minimizing aerodynamic drag loss. The flap is rotated by an integrated servo unit, which can rotate the whole flap unit for controllability during hover and cruise flight. The flaps only receive two signals, fan speed and flap angle by which the aircraft can be controlled throughout the flight using thrust vectoring. Lilium envisions directly connecting inner towns and cities across ranges of between 40 and 200 kilometers at launch and up to 500 kilometers longer term at speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour, while enabling significant time savings for individual passengers compared to alternatives. To deliver the desired range and top speed, an aircraft that is highly efficient in cruise flight is essential. Lilium aircraft requirements are Zero operating emissions Highly efficient cruise phase Vertical takeoff and landing for inner city accessibility Low noise for high frequency inner city flight operations and customer acceptance High seat capacity to achieve attractive unit economics and affordable pricing over time Scalability whilst maintaining ground footprint and low noise. In order to deliver its mission, while fulfilling the requirements needed, Lilium has developed three key technologies that make this possible. Low noise electric ducted fans. During hover, ducted fans have roughly 40% increased efficiency compared to an open propeller at the same disc load. Since nearly all blade tip losses and swirl losses are removed thanks to the duct and the presence of stator vanes, this efficiency improvement goes some way to compensate for the higher power demand induced by the 10 times higher disc loading while hovering. The low noise signature of ducted fans is a key enabler, giving market access to inner city operation. The duct casings and acoustic liners contain the noise, stopping it from radiating in all directions, as it does with open propellers, in a similar manner to commercial jet engines. Further noise reduction can be achieved by the addition of acoustic liners to the internal walls of the duct structure. The liners absorb the acoustic energy of the rotor blade passing frequency and the harmonics, which leads to a substantial reduction in the overall perceived noise level. Only broadband noise is emitted, which arises from the turbulent aerodynamic fluctuations. These fluctuations are most evident in the high-frequency bandwidth of the audible spectrum. Nature helps us to perceive the resulting noise even at lower volume levels as a function of distance, which is why we can hear the low-frequency impulse of helicopter rotors from very far distances, but not the rotor's airflow itself. This is the predicted absolute perceived noise level across a given flight case, except for the initial hover phase with the corresponding 60 decibels at 100 meter distance. The aircraft will be virtually inaudible during cruise flight. As a reference, normal conversational speech is about 65 decibels at 1 meter distance. System Architecture to Maximize Cruise Flight Efficiency The Lilium Jet's highly efficient cruise flight is enabled through three key architectural aspects. The fixed wings and canards create dynamic lift in forward flight. Distributed propulsion enabled by embedding compact ducted fans in the wing. Designing the flaps with a variable nozzle to optimize the fan flow during cruise. As the wings and canards create dynamic lift, the power consumption during the efficient cruise flight is only 10% of the hover consumption. The cruise flight phase is substantially longer than the hover phase, so the lower power consumption needed for cruise is compatible with the higher energy consumption of the hover phase. Instead of having large ducted fans, which lead to structural challenges and increased cruise flight drag. This high disc load design 
leads to the freedom of having 36 smaller ducted fans and embedding them efficiently. Smaller embedded fans lead to less wetted nacelle surface area, which increase the range due to less aerodynamic drag. This is visually demonstrated in this picture, in which the compact engine integration makes the cruise flight benefits visible. This concept is known as distributed electric propulsion. In the case of the Lilium jet, this can be exploited even further by controlling the aircraft using thrust vectoring without any need for standard aerodynamic control surfaces, such as tails, ailerons, and rudders. This essential feature reduces structural weight, aerodynamic drag, and structural complexity for the whole aircraft with positive consequences for mission performance. The aerodynamics of the fan are designed to be most efficient during hover flight, as the thrust required for cruise is only a tenth of that required for hover flight the flow field around the fan changes significantly. This would lead to the consequence of a significantly reduced aerodynamic efficiency during cruise flight compared to hover flight. However, at the exhaust of the ducted fan, a variable area nozzle is used, which changes the exhaust cross-sectional area during the flight, and thereby guarantees high levels of fan efficiency in all phases of the mission profile. For hover, the nozzle is fully open, whilst for cruise the nozzle area is reduced. Since the fans are installed at the rear of the wing, during the transition flight, constant attached flow is achieved. This leads to an efficient high lift flow field and allows extreme controllability during the critical transition flight phase. The greater the mass flow in the engines then the greater the lift generated. This high lift effect combined with the fixed wing architecture allows the reduction of power consumption during the transition. The decrease in power consumption is illustrated as a function of the flight velocity. It is visible that the required power is only around 40% of the hover power at approximately 25% of the cruise velocity. Energy system. The battery system is always of critical interest when designing an EV tall aircraft. The Lilium jet has a very distinct power demand due to the varying disc loading between the hover and cruise flight phase. A common concern that is often raised is whether current battery technology can support Lilium's architecture. Batteries for an EV-tall aircraft need to deliver two things. 1. Sufficient energy density to deliver long range. 2. Sufficient specific power to support the hover phase. The latter is of special interest for Lilium, as the aircraft is designed with a specifically high disc load. Not only the battery density has grown significantly, but also the cell's ability to provide sufficient power. Technology development allowed to pivot the aircraft architecture enabling a payload increase to seven seats aircraft, the biggest in the market. Scalability For an equivalent thrust required to lift 1,000 kilograms in hover phase, an open propeller requires a 30x larger footprint than a ducted fan with acoustic liners. For the same noise level, the Lilium jet is designed with a footprint that is approximately 10 to 15 times smaller compared to an open rotor EV tall aircraft, which gives the Lilium jet a 6 decibels lower noise level prediction at a distance of 100 meters. The low noise profile of a ducted fan comes from important factors. Firstly, the duct generates straight inflow on fan blades with low turbulence, which leads to less noise production. Secondly, the stator takes out swirl and thus allows for very low rotor tip speeds. Thirdly, duct and acoustic liners shield and dissipate tonal and broadband noise. And finally, ducted fans require less power at same disc load and thrust due to the significant performance advantages. In the same way as the disc load, is 10 to 15 times higher compared to competitors' open propeller EV tall aircrafts. The compactness of Lilium's ducted fan concept leads to 10 to 15 times less footprint. This allows, for example, to build a 16-seater EV tall with 63 decibels at 100 meters that fits into the same 15 meters helipad. In comparison, a propeller 5 seats EV tall usually fully covers a helipad. So this technology allows almost four times the passenger throughput from the same infrastructure, which underlines the significant advantages in unit economics for ducted fan concepts. Conclusion Lilium's greatest breakthrough is not accepting the traditional approach, but rather getting to first-principle understanding of the physics, and then systematically innovating.
and optimizing each subsystem in an integrated and coherent manner, such that the resulting aircraft achieves all stated performance objectives. And this starts at the whole aircraft concept level. From a technical perspective, this path is the more difficult one. But Lilium is now confident that this approach will succeed and will ultimately pay off by offering new means of mobility to everyone. Lilium will be an exciting and innovative aerospace company. This aircraft technology will be transformative for regional air mobility. And with coming battery improvements, Lilium will be the leading company in long-range advanced air mobility. Comment below with your thoughts on the Lilium Jet.